you think he wants to end the program? Well, obviously trying to make the classes electives are going to make it much harder for students to take the classes. Because of the amount of credits that we need to fill with our core classes, we're not going to have space to take elective classes even if we wanted to. So why not just listen to what the students want if that's your... Well, I think we are listening. Um, as I say, we're listening to a very wide range of opinions. But we should be the most important opinion. It's our education. Well, but it's also true that most high school students in the district never choose to take an MAS course. In fact, As I mentioned to you, I think it puts a double burden on Chicano students to have to take these electives. I mentioned to you that I thought this was a regressive agenda because it does not produce equity or equality of those courses. Are you not capitulating to one man's capricious wishes up uh, in Phoenix instead of exercising local control as part of being a board member of TUSD? Not everyone wants to take this course. Yes. But there are students who do want to take these courses. Not right. everyone wants to take regular history or regular English or regular government and they're forced into those classes. Well, we do. The state does require a standard core and that core should provide adequate treatment of all the things which the state wants, which the state wants in the social studies for. And it should provide much better treatment of the perspectives of different ethnic groups in this region and not just Mexican American. Can you name five Mexican American historical figures? You know, but look at I can name a lot of Mexican historical figures. I don't no, no. Oh, Mexican American. Uh, my education you know in this area is very. I didn't get this education. Change the, the core classes first and then made these electives after you got the curriculum to change in the regular classes. <laughs> I have not talked to him at all about this, and he has not indicated where, he, since the campaign, I know he made statements during the campaign, since the campaign he has not indicated what he will demand from the district. I think it's appropriate that he hasn't. Uh, he says he's waiting for the investigation to conclude, which uh, is the appropriate thing to do. It has just concluded. They will investigate it, write a report for the state, and then he will, at some point in the next few weeks, uh, issue some sort of finding, and if he thinks we're in violation, then he'll propose a remedy, and then the district will engage with him. Wait, wait, wait. wait until the audit is completed before you propose your resolution. Because I would rather do something that I think actually does make sense for the program, <laughs> or the teaching, rather than waiting for the state to come in and make demands. And I, although it's hard to say what the state will do, I think it puts us in a better position to defend the program as a whole when the state finally does come in and start making demands. Hupenthal hasn't made any demands yet. I'm sure that he will make demands, but those will come over the summer. Uh, to see is this the best plan to take and then based on that evidence you can say the research showed that making an elective is better for Mexican American well, students. Well it's true but it's hard to You're the president. have evidence. Well, being Get the, the evidence. Well 
it is true that in some cases presidents make up evidence, but I don't want to make up evidence. We can't have evidence about the success. So you're making a non-evidence-based decision. Well, you can't provide evidence on something you haven't done yet. So. fighting for education, and that itself should symbolize what you should be fighting for, and you should never make sense of something that doesn't make sense to begin with. And I believe that, which I believe in, and which I think it does make sense for the program. <laughs> So one question they want answered is, what achievement gap or what program will address the achievement gap in well, place we, of ethnic studies? Well, we well in the first place, and regardless of the merits of the program, and there are merits of the program. Uh, but Hoopenthal ran his campaign on the promise that he would end ethnic studies. So how is it that you, you're not quite aware of his stance on wanting to end this program? Oh, I know what he said during the campaign, but I think it's relevant that he has said nothing of like that since he came into office. So you're no, saying he changed his mind? Like no, I simply, I'm simply, I'm not speculating on what he's going to say, and I'm not speculating on his motives, but I am simply saying that it often happens, as we know from politics, that people say different things in a campaign than they do when they're in office. I don't think that's a very original observation. And since he hasn't said what he's going to do in office, I, I simply won't speculate on it. You are, um, have also been in the spotlight because of the proposal to downgrade some of these courses, which are now fulfilling core curriculum, into something that is perhaps a, an elective. And why did you make that suggestion? Well, there are two main parts of the Mexican-American studies curriculum. There is a social studies part, and there is a literature part. And my proposal is to change the status of the social studies part. Actually, it's a long proposal with many parts, um, which we, I hope we'll have a chance to talk about. And that's just the one particular part of it that's drawn the most attention. Um, but in that part, I'm changing the status of the social studies core. I don't consider it a downgrade. Um, we have all of our arts courses in the district, our electives, our language courses, our vocational courses. I don't think anybody thinks of those as second class courses. Um, students love those courses. They seek those courses out. Um, so I, I don't see it as a downgrade. It simply is recognizing the distinction that we have some courses that fulfill the state requirements for the core sequences and some that don't. And would you agree with that? I mean, is that, do you think that's a, that's a logical idea? And no. talking about these proposals, uh, that's just one element, no. but you said no, no. And, and I ask you why, explain that. I, I think the, the entire proposal the, uh, that's being offered, the resolution that's being offered, uh, is, has a number of problems. First of all, it's premature. Um, we're, we're in the middle of an audit. We have no, no findings yet on that audit. And unless Mr. Stegman has been in conversations that the public doesn't know about, that we don't know about, no. with Mr. Hoopenthal, then there's no reason to do it. Number two is that, you know, there, there's been a, a serious lawsuit brought that is challenging the constitutionality of the statute. Uh, we are within days of filing a motion for summary judgment. We'll have a ruling uh, on the constitutionality of that statute this summer. This it, is the original Horn statute. That, yes, it's that 20, we're, that it, we're HB 2281, right. which is now 15111 and 15112. And so this statute is under review now by a federal judge with respect to doesn't meet constitutional muster. Mr. Stegman has brought forward a proposal that's premised upon, one, the constitutionality of the statute, and number two, that there will be an interpretation from Mr. Hoopenthal as the superintendent of education that we're in violation of the statute. I think on both matters, he's premature. And so what he's done is created a controversy. He's created a crisis in our community where one need not exist. How would you respond to that, Mark, that, that this is premature, first of all, and that it, that it creates an unnecessary controversy? Well, there has been controversy surrounding this curriculum for a long time. Uh, my proposal is something that I think makes sense anyway. Um, so the content of the proposal would be the same whether or not the state had intervened. Uh, the state's intervention was intrusive. It's unwelcome. I don't think any of us are happy about it. I think the state has better things to worry about. 
and in fact, more important things to worry about. And I think the district has more important things to think about. This program affects a relatively small number of students. It's a very small part of the desegregation budget, which is a small part of our, well, substantial, but you know, the smaller part of our total budget. And it certainly isn't what we want to be worried about. Um, but the state has, through its intervention, has forced us to look at this program, and that's why this is coming forward now. But I think the merits of it, uh, at least from my viewpoint, um, stand on their own. But the timing, yes, has been dictated by the state. Correct. That's not true. I mean, because it, it's still premature. There's no reason why you don't wait for Mr. Hoopenthal. And, and it'd be my uh, expectation that Mr. Hoopenthal is going to wait till we get a ruling from Judge Tashima. Uh, that's the judge that's assigned to this case. So, you know, I, I think that what, what we have here, again, is a manufactured crisis. And, and it goes so far, there's a level of insensitivity that's going on here. And, and let me just give you one small example of it. The meeting uh, that was supposed to happen this week didn't happen. This board reschedules the meeting. When do they schedule it for? May 5th. Of all the days, <laughs> of all the days, it, and, and it shows the gulf between this board and its insensitivity, its cultural insensitivity, its, its, its lack of understanding the Tucson community. If you're going to power play three votes and pass this resolution, you're going to do it on Cinco de Mayo? I mean, what could be more insulting to the Latino community? And what will create a lasting division in this community? It'll be what this school board did to us on Mexican-American studies on Cinco de Mayo. I mean, it's ludicrous and it's insensitive, but it's consistent with what we face against TUSD. Can you name five from Mexican Americans? Can you name five? Can you name five Mexican American historical figures?